Thank you for coming. Hello, make us laugh. Uh, we have our artist in residence, Sarah Sill, uh, so she'll be doing her presentation today. Um, our artist in residence is a one to three month residence. She's doing a one month one. So anyone can apply, just kind of have an idea of what you want to present and work on while you're here for the week or whatever your time is. Without further ado, here's Sarah Sill. Thank you for coming. I'm very grateful to have had this time at the Double Thinkers Lab. And my uh, idea in applying to come here was to devote time to making uh, some designs for scarves, which is something I've been working on for a couple of years. And they're sort of an, an adjunct to other things that I do. I do all sorts of other art. And so I thought this was a great place to make that the point of the time I spend. Because usually I just sort of dabble on them here and there. And I wanted to spend some concentrated time thinking about them. <laughs> so how did I, how did they start making scarves? I think it's the story of most creative inspirations. I had a project uh, to create a proposal for making stained glass windows for the Phillips Manor uh, Metro North Station. So I went to Phillips Manor, which as many of you may know is actually Sleepy Hollow. <coughs> and they didn't want anything having to do with Edless Horse. <laughs> so I went to take a look at the area, and what struck me as soon as I got off the train was the dogwoods were in bloom, and they were like, ferociously abundant. And I kind of looked up, and there was light coming through the petals. And I said, they look like stained glass already. So that became the theme of my proposal. So at that juncture, I mean, I'm a collage artist, a painter. I didn't know anything about Photoshop except two things. I knew how to you know, blend. I knew how to clean a negative, basically. How to blend it and how to clone some. That was it. But these were digital images. So I was trying to take a small image. I'm actually scanned it. I was trying to take an image and blow it up. In the process of trying to do that, next slide, something happened. So this. I'm going to show you. So this is the original image. I wanted to use that section. So when I went into Photoshop and I started blowing it up, it started pixelating. And then I accidentally hit on something called crayons. It's way back then. And every time I hit a crayon, because I like crayons, every time I hit a crayon, something else would happen. Mm -hmm. So it went from a three-dimensional photograph to a pixelated photograph to something where all the colors started changing. And I assume it's something to do with the mathematics of, of digital and pixel photography. So if you change one pixel, since it's a mathematical relationship to the next pixel, you change this one, this one changes. So something happened. Can't say why. So Anyway, I looked at this, and it wasn't really what I had in mind for the proposal, but I loved the effect. So a proposal went on its way, and I happened to have a residency in, in printmaking. So I went to the, to the printmaker place, and I printed all the, these kind of awkward colored images. And I had a show of those images. Someone said to me, well, you can go back, I'll show you, go back one. Okay. okay, never mind. So I had a bunch of images in this vein, and they're very Japanese, they're very oriental, and actually the display is vertical. So there were these kind of several versions of them, and the idea, I always had this like hanging in some kind of screen or vertical uh, uh, fashion, and I had them displayed, and someone said, well, they're very nice, but I just don't have the wall space for them. I wish they were scarves. <laughs> so, I, so coincidentally, I was taking a, a class at the Fashion Institute of Technology. I was thinking about this. I said, well, you know we have a, a fabric printer here. Why don't you try it? So this is the translation of that image. Uh, since it's only printed on one side, I backed it with a complementary back. This is another version. So these are part of the Dogwood series. This is also Dogwood. Hard to tell. Next slide. So you see these are 
religious flowers. And so that is how I began to think about translating the photographs into textiles. I actually made a, a scarf for men. This is the one of the only scarf I had for men. It's also part of the Dogwood series, and I learned that men have bigger necks than ladies. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to make them longer. Okay, trial and error. Uh, this is from a photograph um, that I took on an Amtrak train. It's like mm. the trains are just moving. So I have a series, and it's called when Rothko rolled Amtrak. Because mm. it's all just color fields as the colors are moving along. So this I, I did uh, from an image, a photographic image that I took when I did that printing residency, which was in California. These are, and you know what kind of flowers these are. But you'll, if, you, if you've seen my other work, you begin to see this kind of fascination with these shapes and forms and nature as being a big part of that. Uh, this is the same image with a whole different translation. They're called little pink buds, little pink flowers. This is, uh, this is the original photograph, it's a dahlia. And these are the scarves that came from the lines that emanated from the dahlia. Uh, this I did uh, a series uh, from Minnesota where I had a, a fellowship to take nature photographs. So it's like I went to heaven because a lot of my work uh, is about nature because nature has a natural pattern, a natural rhythm. I look for shapes, I look for the way things flow, and especially if you're thinking in, in verticals, uh, I mean, rectangles, long shapes, you kind of want to see, it's like music, you kind of want to see how it goes along. So uh, I lucked out and I had a lot of source resources and sources for a whole body of scarves from there. So, how I spent my summer vacation here. <laughs> uh, okay, so I came to do scarves and I came to kind of trans work out some of the ideas I'd had for a while. So this is the original image, it's uh, some kind of uh, vegetation in Cartagena, Colombia. This is what I created from that image. So, I tried it in two different colorways. This is an enlargement, enlargement. this is the whole layout. So I think about, you know, so I look for things that have strong shapes, uh, distinctive shapes, and some kind of flow. And then I sort of try to figure out what colors they might, you know, work well in, and what I'm interested in right now. So I had a whole body of scarves that were very muted, and a whole body of scarves that were very loud, and I'm interested in these colors at the moment. Uh, so this one is right outside my window. This is a New York collection. I also do things other than nature, so this is uh, um, in Connecticut, the Seacourt. So anything that has these kinds of natural, you know, think of think of a score of music, you know, think of the, of the branches of the notes. So there's a certain kind of rhythm that I that appeals to me. So I made a score. This is remember I told you the Rothko series. This is another Amtrak whizzing by. And it's, it's a detail, but it'll be a long one. I want to do something a little abstract, not so pointedly you know, recognizable. Okay. So what did I see in Hurleyville that translated into scarves? Thanks. So this is a Hurleyville scarf mm -hmm. from the landscape right outside my window. This is a large detail. This is another colorway. I'm kind of fascinated by it. It's a little muted in this light, but it's this very, very deep magenta and a deep purple. So that's something that's kind of I haven't done before. This is a little more muted, um, but I think it'll be nice when when you're making these designs. You have to think about you know the edges, most important, because that's what most people see. How it will tie? What happens? When it ties? What happens if you hang it this way? So those are things that. In addition to the layout, you're thinking about what will be the end result. Uh, I've never made a square scarf, but this is an idea. And it's and if you know where this is, anybody know where this is? Uh, the gateway, the flowers next to the restaurant? Yes. <laughs> so, you know, the pots, they're beautiful, the flowers, they're beautiful. So, thought, so in this case, 
when you're thinking about square, it's a whole different idea. Because there you have to think about how it's going to talk this way, or how it's going to hang in a triangle, all kinds of things like this. So, kind of happy to have that opportunity to think about these things. We're happy you took photos of our flowers. Oh, we I have plenty of yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> so most of you have seen this part of my work, because all the other work is me in front of a computer. This is what I've been working on in the back office. New tools. The new tools. So how was I? How did I get involved in making screens? So I'm a collage artist. You know, my early practice collage artist. So this is one of my early pieces. And again, you can see there's something in my mind that likes this kind of storytelling over time. Things that have a certain rhythm. This is actually all the pieces of my breakfast. I had a little time in Paris. So I took all everything that, you know, food wrapping is very colorful. My painting was not. And I just looked at our garbage and I collaged over it and gave it new life. So this is, this is a diary of my time in Paris. Uh, this is uh, three photographs that are collaged together. So you've got an idea I'm kind of giving the story. Okay. Ten years ago, uh, for me, collage is about collect connecting things. Uh, so I had this idea, what would happen if you took all you know, photographs of different trees from all over the world and you connected them? Would you be able to tell? Would you be able, does nature connect harmoniously by itself? And one of the ideas I had, if you made it sort of an accordion, you could see some part of the story, but not all. Could you make the connections from the fifth panel to the first, visually, mentally? So it was all about, you know, it's another form of collage. This actual piece, if you can, as, as Elion pointed out, you can take a look at the little um, push pin. That's, it's only about seven inches. It was pinned to the wall. Uh, the photographs, there with electrical tape on cardboard. <laughs> But when I actually looked at it, it really kind of captured this whole idea that I had about making these Japanese screens. You know, it's kind of small, but by looking at it in black and white. These are all untouched photographs. So I was already taking pictures for the shapes and not for the depth. So the way I was taking them was also part of the thought process, how to delineate the shapes. So this is from the same, these are, those uh, were taken in Banff. This is part of a, another sort of thought process. So these are four different photographs, collaged together, a painting where the seams are uh, to make some kind of connection. This is another idea I have, again, sort of like these folding screens telling you these are poppy shadows because the shapes are much more clear. So you get, you get where I'm headed. Hmm. I also had this idea, what happened if they were life-size? So one idea I had was to make these giant screens where you were like this small and you were just kind of surrounded by nature. Um, so these are some ideas where you had um, just these giant images that were stand on stanchions and you could sort of walk around. Would you be able to feel a pattern or a rhythm if you move from place to place? Um, so these are like my little negative from my negatives back when we used to use negatives and put little figures out of negatives. So these are, you know, five by sevens, but I like them big. So that's, that was the idea, big, big. So you can kind of walk through these places. Uh, I also work with people, not just nature. And here, this is a bridge, it's in Cartagena. And again, the way I took the pictures, the people became essentially silhouettes. Um, so you had one structure that was constant, but the flow of people changed. So, you know, it was kind of interesting to see how that made some kind of music for the story. So again, I'm interested in silhouettes. It's another idea I had. So now you're getting to see where I'm, how I'm getting to the streets. So these are um, freight, freight myrtle trees. So the idea was, you know, big screens in a living room if you didn't have windows. Six of them, yeah, same plant. Um, what happened? So one of these ideas was how can I execute this in large format? Still working on that. But essentially now I've got the idea that they're shapes. So. <laughs> <laughs> the laser do the work. So while I'm, while I'm sitting there tied to the computer and I thought, well, as long as I'm here, 
I can't just not take advantage of something I know nothing about. What's the point? So I'm looking at this laser and can it do this and can it do that, can it do this? And sure enough, let's try it. So I started, I had this image of a tree that I divided in three panels. And the first run I made in cardboard, I divided in three pieces. So this is the process. Uh, so for some reason, the first panel came out shorter than the second one. <laughs> Live and learn. Um, what I really like is the fact that you can see the reflection on the laser cutter there. So it hung it up against the, uh, the window. It's a little close-up, but if you actually got really close, you can see that this is the cardboard one because you can actually see the holes in the cardboard. Mm. Oh, yeah, at the top. Yeah, at the top. So it's quite amazing. And it was a way of figuring out where the weaknesses were because some of the leaves in cardboard certainly were too big for the, for the stem. Mm -hmm. So I had to shore them up. I mean, I, I imagine I would eventually cut it in wood, but just in case. Uh, you saw where things didn't kind of work out, where the pieces were too big or too small. So it was a very uh, welcome and useful way of working cool. things out. I love the residue. That's a whole other mindset because the shapes are so intriguing. So something will happen with the shapes that don't know what. Uh, this is the this is the actual pieces on the laser cutter bed, which I think is kind of cool too. So I don't know what that's going to become, but that could become something. So even even the throw-offs, the, the residue is is something that is beautiful to me and something that excites me and I want to figure out what to do with them. So this is the, the wood, I believe this is the wood, yes, I can see the knot, the little knots, before we actually, un, before we popped out the pieces. So you can see that it's actually very, very fine. The machine is very, very fine. It's actually beautiful, so I was talking to Eve about maybe, you know, you don't have to cut it all the way through, you can etch it. The image would be just as you know lovely if it didn't go all the way through. If, you, if that was your mindset, so that's another idea. Uh, there's a little close up. You see that this is before anything. You can tell which pieces are are actually gone through because they're a little recessed. The pieces that are not, you know, don't have that darker line means they're still stuck. So they have at least actually fallen into the bed. This is Mark punching out the pieces. So these are, and on the on the right we have the three versions: cardboard one, cardboard two. The last one I made in Lubom, uh, which has its own li little issues, um, but it's closer to what I'm striving for. Some of the issues with Luan is um, that it's not even. So when the laser hits it, sometimes it cuts all the way through, and sometimes it doesn't if the piece is not close to the laser, if it's farther away from the laser. It's also fragile. If it doesn't come through, branches will break. You know, there are things that I learned in that process, too, but I kind of have to decide which side you want to cut it on. One side has a different feeling. And that is what I learned here, in addition to all the computer support I had from Alian and from Mark. And, uh, uh, I learned a lot of different things that I didn't know before. So I'm hoping you have some questions. I brought a few examples of the actual scars, so that you can have to touch them and see them to kind of get an idea of what I strive for in that realm. But I'm sure. I think this is just the beginning for me because mm -hmm. still haven't fi haven't have, haven't finished the project yet, so I have to come back. <laughs> <Shops. laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm sure between now and then, you know, other ideas will come to pass in my head. And uh, I just am very very thankful. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Denise. Thank you, there. Thank you. about the scarves is that they're all personal right. because they're all based on primarily photographs occasionally they did something I've done elsewhere but they're photographs so they all have a story they all have a basic location and they have a meaning certainly to me but they're they're not just kind of designs 